Hey guys, I want to thank you for joining me on another video of anatomy and physiology. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the superficial back. And so just to kind of get a little bit out of the way, I know it's been a while since my last recording. I've had a lot of things going on, a lot of personal things, um, like the passing of my brother, for example. And I don't want to harp too much on this stuff, but, um, you know, I've been taking a break for taking a break from social media and and things like this like uh, YouTube and such but anyways uh, you know I, I really enjoy making these videos and so I'm back at it and um, so I'm kicking off 2021 I know it's f February but uh, I'm kicking it off with a video on the superficial back so let's take a look at that so with the superficial back we're looking at the upper back in particular so this is like the the superior um, half of the back. And when you look at these muscles, the ones that we're going to be taking a look at, and there's four main muscles that we'll look at for this. All of these muscles have attachment points to the torso and the scapula and the arm. Okay. So now really with, with these attachment points to the scapula, when you're moving the scapula, especially when we're talking about the posterior muscles, when you move the scapula, you're essentially moving the arm or the humerus also. Now we have we do have one muscle where it is specifically attaching to the humerus, and we'll take a look at that in just a second. So, so one of the very important things to keep in mind when you're thinking about muscle movements, and um, is is two things. Number one, looking at the point of insertion, okay, and the point of origin of the muscle, and also looking at the direction of the muscle fibers. Now, typically, they kind of go hand in hand. So they'll, they'll kind of go along with each other. They run parallel to each other. So it, it's really important to consider the muscle fiber in the direction that it's running because essentially the muscle has one job, and that is to contract or to shorten. And when that muscle contracts or it shortens, it brings those two points that we just talked about, the insertion and the point of origin, uh, it brings those two points closer together. And so when the muscle relaxes or elongates, then it those those two points um, separate. Okay, the, the distance between them get, grows larger. So let's look at the let's look at these four main muscles of the superficial back. All right. So the first one we're going to be looking at is the latissimus dorsi. This muscle, um, you can jokingly call it the the butt scratch muscle, because you know and, and you know go ahead and do the actions while I'm talking about this stuff. You know, go go reach around your desk. You know, re or reach around your your chair there and and start scratching your butt. And the muscle that's primarily responsible for that the primary mover for that so it's a it's a medial rotation and a depression right of the of the arm so you're you're abducting right the humerus is abducting and there's a medial rotation of that humerus and you're reaching down and you're scratching so the muscle primarily responsible for that action is the latissimus dorsi so if you can kind of sit up straight and, and kind of bend your arm let's look, let's say your right arm for example just kind of hold it up at a 90 degree angle and what you want to do is you want to kind of rotate, bring or or have your elbow point, have your elbow try to touch your spine with your elbow, right? So that's that medial rotation. Now, when you when your when your elbow is going back and you're trying to touch your spine, you should feel your latissimus dorsi on your thoracic region on the posterior side. You should feel it contracting. All right. So again, the, so the point of insertion or the point of origin, let's say, let's start off with that. The point of origin for the latissimus dorsi. Now. The muscle itself is actually not attaching to your vertebrae. That's T7 all the way down to L5 and part of your iliac crest or your uh, on the pelvic region. It's actually a fascia, so it's like a uh, a, a cartilage tissue that that connects that that runs from the muscle and then the, I'm sorry, it runs from the spine to the muscle. So you have that connective tissue that that goes into the muscle. So you can kind of see that in the image there, and then that that muscle wraps around. It wraps around your back, and then it connects to the intertubular sulcus of the humerus. So it's attached to the humerus, and this is why, when you're when you're trying to get your elbow to touch your spine, that's your humerus. Your humerus is the one that's being moved by your latissimus dorsi. Okay, and that's why you should feel that contraction there in that in that spot. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So let's look at the trapezius muscle now. And so the trapezius muscle also is a little bit somewhat of a complicated complicated muscle as well. And I hope you guys don't mind me referencing like exercise movements and such to kind of talk about how these uh, muscles work. 
So in the exercise or fitness world, the trapezius muscle is typically broken down into three regions. Now, if you take a close look at the trapezius muscle, you see it's another large muscle, right? This is the one where um, sometimes my wife and I and our and our friends, we will watch like the um, oh, CrossFit uh, competitions. And in particular with the women competitions, the women typically have like these large traps, like these shoulders that just stick out like halfway up their neck, right? And so these trapezius muscles that run down the down the back, they're typically broken up into an upper, middle, and lower region. And as you look at the trapezius muscle here, you see, you'll notice that even though it's one muscle, you'll notice that this muscle has the the each of these regions, the fibers will run in different directions. Okay. So for example, like the top, the top layer, the top region, you can see that the the fibers are kind of running up and down. The middle layer is running parallel, right, uh, east to west. And then as you go down to the lower region, it's also more north uh, north and south. And so uh, uh, it's not as simple as just doing a shrug exercise that, that uh, attacks these muscles. You know, you have to do things like pull downs also, you know, just like with the latissimus dorsi. The latissimus dorsi are the, are the pull-up muscle or part of that, right? That's on the posterior side of the back. Uh, also, the latissimus that we just talked about, just below the uh, trapezius. And so, with the trapezius muscle, oh, oh, oh actually, let me address also so the middle region. So, the middle region is more of an east-west uh, direction, right, the muscle fibers. So, any exercise where you're pulling and you're causing, so you can kind of, you can kind of stick out your arms and then, and then have your elbows kind of, try to touch your elbows on, on your back and as you as you as you fold your arms back and you try to get your now your, your elbows are not going to be anywhere near to touch uh, to touch right they're not going to touch at all they're not going to come close but as you attempt to have your elbows touch you should feel your traps um contract and in particular the medial aspect of the trapezius muscle because those are the ones that are running northeast so those are causing your those are causing the scapula to kind of pinch medially so they 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 bring they reduce the angle or the distance between the, the scapular uh, muscles. So let's talk about the or a point of origin for the trapezius muscle. Now, this is, you know, it's a large muscle, as you can see, and it runs basically all the way down your back. Now, from the most superior aspect of it, it actually attaches to the occipital protuberance of the skull. So this is actually attaching to the back of your head, and it's attaching to the nucleal, the nucleal ligament, okay, if you remember that, and then the spinous process, of C7 all the way down to T3, and depending on your genetics, maybe even T4. And this muscle converges, right, laterally into your acromion and the spine of the scapula, as you can see here. Now also, it kind of wraps around towards the front, and it attaches to the lateral third of the scapula as well. So it does affect the way your scapula moves and the, and the stabilization of, uh, of your shoulder. Okay, so rounding out our posterior superficial back muscles, we're not going to spend a terrible amount of time on these because I do address these in other videos. So we're looking at the infraspinitis and the rhomboidus major and minor. So the rhomboidus major and minor, these the, the point of origin for these are the medial aspect of the scapula and they attach to C5 down to T, T5 um, spine, uh, your spinous process. And again, so they, what they do when they contract, if you're looking at the direction of the muscle fibers is that they pinch the scapula, bringing it closer. So these are good exercises for, you know, these are good for, um, for your pull-ups and for your rows. So you're kind of your seated rows where you're pulling the, the weight in it. And, and if you, if you're pinching your back, you should feel those muscles also contract. And on top of that, not just the rhomboidus major and minor, but the infraspinitis. Now the infraspinitis uh, the reason I, I saved this one for last is because the insertion point for, for this particular muscle is actually the humerus uh, as well, just like like, like tissimus dorsi. So uh, that does it for the superficial back. Uh, that's four muscles that we discussed, the latissimus dorsi, the trapezius, infraspinitis, and the rhomboidus major and minor. So I guess you can say that's five muscles. But in any case, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And in the next one, we'll be discussing the superficial chest muscles, okay, or the pectoral region. So thanks for watching and good luck in your studying.